Brother Oro, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I just have a couple points. I actually try to go on the Dawawai stream, but they were packed. Um, number one, the, to consider Jesus as God. That, I mean, if we consider our fitrah, we can all agree that we would believe in God. But there's no way we could agree that we would our fitrah would tell us that there's a trinity. That's I mean, what would stop at trinity or four persons or five persons? The fitrah is very simple. There's a God. It doesn't go. It doesn't have to be any deeper than that, or more confusing than how the Christians are making it. Uh, I wanted to comment. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody's seen the God Logic and um, Monsoor debate. And one of the things that struck me was they're asking that that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam says that Ahmed is mentioned in the Bible, and the Quran doesn't say that. It says that he speaks of Ahmed um, in the Injil. But it doesn't say that he says he tells that Ahmed is going to be mentioned by name in the Injil or even in the Old Testament. I would think it's more important to have the attributes of the person that's coming rather than the name, because if you have the name, you could have 10,000 Ahmeds and all 10,000 of them could be could claim to be uh, a messenger of God. What's more important, the attributes or the name? of the individual. And if we look, you know, the sec another thing regarding the argument that these Christians are bringing about the Injil, and they expect us to say that the Injil are the four gospels, you know, if that's the case, then we should have used the Pravanaju, the gospels, right? When, even in, even when we're speaking in, we, with Christianity, when we say, we, they, we will normally say the gospels because it's four gospels, not one. So if it was a multiple, if it was these four gospels that the Christians are trying to say that it was, then it should be anaju, because it's multiple, right? Um, on top of that, regarding the Injil, you know, their claim is, oh, well, it says to follow the law in the Injil. Yeah, in, with, in the gospels that they have, the quotes from Jesus are laws that, that correspond with the Quran. Turn the other cheek. Looking at a woman, you know, with lust in your eyes is is adultery. These are things that us as Muslims can agree with. And this is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling them to follow. It's nothing any different than what's in the Quran. And on top of that, it further says, follow what's in the Torah, in the Injil, and also then what the Lord has revealed, which is the Quran. Because the Quran at the end of the day is the Muhammad over the previous scriptures right so i don't i don't know how that's so difficult for them to understand what is in their what we would consider there is um tahrif in their scriptures even the quotes by jesus match with the quran mercy um again committing adultery just by looking at, 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 a, at a at a woman the, there's no contradiction with what we have and what is in there um the last the last the last piece um regarding regarding the mentioning the name of ahmed in even with the with the christians uh, at the beginning of of um the first century the name of yeshua was like one of the most common names that men had in that area because they were all naming a lot of these parents are naming their children yeshua because they wanted them to be the next prophet that was coming that was similar to joshua so at, that's the same thing as we have in the Bible. You also have Barabbas, who was also well, in the original in the older um, do, um, documents of the of the Gospels was actually called Yeshua Barabbas, Jesus, son of the father. And that was the person that was swapped with the Christians, Jesus. So you have Yeshua Barabbas, Jesus, son of the father. The name Yeshua was so common. How, how do we know which Yeshua was actually the the one that that they're saying is the Messiah? Um, I have more, but I'm that's sure, pretty much I'm it. Sure, and brother, that, that is a lot of information for everybody. Yeah, to yeah I'm like, so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm, try, I'm trying to. It's like a shotgun. But the last one that I wanted to point out was Deuteronomy yeah, 18, 15 through nineteen, and even then it says someone will that that God will send somebody in the like that was like Moses. And it specifically says that this person that is coming will not be the Lord. 
So Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19, saying that that person that is coming, that the Christians are saying is Jesus, it specifically says it won't be the Lord, yet the Christians consider Jesus the Lord. So it makes no sense whatsoever. But I'm sorry, that's a lot of information that I just threw on, and I know there's Christians waiting. I just wanted to say my piece um, because these, these are common arguments. Yeah, these are common. Yes. I would like to make first comment. Actually, what you got from what this guy with no logic, Avery, I made a fruitation video actually for him. He caught two verses from the Holy Quran that you caught and he twisted them, he lied about them. He caught mm -hmm. from Surah Saf, chapter 61, verse 6, and he caught from Surah Al-Araf, chapter 7, verse 157. He caught from mm -hmm. Surah Saf, chapter 6, verse 6, chapter 61, verse 6, where if Qala Isa ibn Maryam, يا بني إسرائيل إن رسول الله إليكم مصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة ومفشرا برسول يأتي من بعدي اسمه أحمد. Now he claimed that the Quran says here that Ahmed was mentioned in the Torah and the Injil. We are telling you and we refuted him that the verse does not say that he was mentioned. It does not say. Jesus is telling us here that there will be a prophet after him. His name is Ahmed, but he never mentioned in the verse that the name of this prophet Ahmed will be mentioned by name in the Torah and Injil. But he, exactly. quote the other, he quote the other verse, which says Maktuba, Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, verse 157. Maktuban. Maktuban, that's me written in the home. So it's written in their books. He combined those two verses lie about them to suit his needs he said that it says maktuba written so ahmed is written in the torah in jeep no right verse exactly 157 says maktuba it's his description his attribution exactly. prophecy exactly. about him talking about him there is nowhere in islam or in quran say that the name ahmed will be mentioned in the torah and in jeep now i open challenge for any christian and i told the brother uh about Shaib Muhammad to bring them. When he was in his live show with Chris, the Quran affirming the Bible, I was backstage for more than two hours and he never let me. I have an open challenge to any Christian. Those guys in the picture, David Wood, God No Logic, Chris, anybody. I challenge you in any discussion or debate if the Quran affirm your book or not. There is nowhere. Quran always speak about the Torah and Injil in past tense. Quran never spoke about them in present and future. When Allah mentioned the Torah and Injil in the Quran, Allah revealed those verses to Prophet Muhammad during the time of Prophet Muhammad in past tense, which means Allah was not talking about the books in the hands of the Christian and Jew during the time of Prophet Muhammad. Because if Allah was talking, referring to those books in their hands, Allah will not reveal the verses in past tense. Allah will reveal it to Prophet Muhammad in present and future if he was talking about the books in their hands. But Allah revealed it always, all around the Holy Quran and Hadith. They speak about the Torah and Injil in past tense, nothing in present and future. Which proof what they have in their hand is corrupted. So the verses that they are using to prove and to affirm the Quran, to say that the Quran affirmed the Bible, actually their verses are condemnation. Like when he said, وَلْيَحْكُمْ أَهْلَ الْإِنْجِيلِ بِمَا أَنزَلَ الله. He said, Allah says, oh, let the people of the gospel, let the people of the Injil judge accordingly. So your Allah is here testifying with the Injil. No, this is Arabic grammars. You should learn Arabic. When you read وَلْيَحْكُمْ we have the first letter, letter Lam in Arabic. And grammatically, you call this as Lam al Amr. It's a command. So when you add Lam to Yahkum, it's a command verb. So Allah was telling the Christian, commanding them, judging them to judge according to the Injil that was revealed to Isa during the time of Isa because they were judging to the corrupted one. So when Allah says, let them judge, this is not a confirmation, that's a condemnation. Allah condemned them and he proved that what they have in their hand is corrupted. So because he lacked knowledge of the Arabic language and the Arabic grammars, he doesn't know that. And unfortunately, many of our Muslim brothers doesn't know that. The letter Lam in the beginning of Yahkum is, we call it Lam al amr grammatically. It's a command. So this verse is a condemnation, not confirmation, which proves that their Bible is corrupted. We have guessed yeah. that.